In our previous video, we saw how the Mertz Price Circulating Current Scheme protects large alternators in power plants. But here's the catch. We can't use this method in small alternators because the neutral ends of the three-phase windings are often connected internally to a single terminal, and there's no way to fit in the necessary current transformers at the neutral side of each phase winding. Still, we can't leave the alternator unprotected, especially not from earth faults. So, to handle this, we use a simpler method called Balanced Earth Fault Protection. In today's video, we'll understand exactly how this protection scheme works, what its limitations are. So, watch till the end. It's going to clear up a very important concept in alternator protection. Now, let's move on and see how this scheme is arranged. This setup is for a three-phase alternator, and it uses three current transformers one for each phase, R, Y, and B. These CTs are mounted on each line conductor and their secondaries are connected in parallel. But that's not all. There's one more current transformer placed in the neutral conductor, which connects the star point of the alternator to Earth, typically through an earthing resistance. A relay is connected across the combined secondaries of these current transformers, and this is where the key action takes place. The protection zone is defined between the line CTs and the neutral CT, so if any earth fault occurs within this zone, it will be detected by this arrangement. Let's now talk about how the system behaves under normal operating conditions. When everything's working fine, the currents flowing in the alternator leads, that is in the R, Y and B phase conductors, are perfectly balanced. That means, in the secondaries of the CTs, their vector sum is zero, and no current flows through the relay. Also, under these conditions, the current in the neutral wire is zero, so the CT in the neutral conductor also doesn't supply any current to the relay. Hence, the relay remains inactive. Now, let's talk about faults external to the protected zone. For example, an earth fault at point F2 in phase B. In such cases, the fault current flows from the alternator through the fault and returns through the neutral, and this total current is still balanced, meaning the sum of phase currents is equal to the neutral current. The current sensed by the line CT in phase B is the same as that sensed by the neutral CT. These currents cancel each other out, so no differential current appears and the relay does not operate. That's why external faults are not detected by this scheme. What about internal faults? like at point F1. In that case, the current path is from the phase windings to Earth and returns through the earthing resistance to the neutral. So now, the sum of the phase currents no longer equals the neutral current and a differential current appears in the secondary of the CTs. This happens because the fault current will only be sensed by the neutral CT. The line CTs will not sense the fault current. This differential current flows through the operating coil of the relay which causes it to close its contacts and activate the trip circuit, disconnecting the alternator from the system. But keep in mind, this scheme only responds to earth faults. Why? Suppose there is a phase-to-phase -phase fault between R and Y phases. The fault current will circulate through that loop. The CTs will not sense any imbalance in current, so no differential current will appear and the relay will not operate. That's why phase-to-phase -phase faults are not detected by this scheme unless they eventually lead to earth faults. So that wraps up how balanced earth fault protection works in alternators, where Mertz price schemes just aren't practical. It's a clever and efficient method to safeguard the machine from internal earth faults without needing complex CT arrangements. If you found this video helpful or learned something new today, make sure to like it. It really supports the channel and helps more people discover these concepts. And if you know someone studying electrical protection or working in power systems, don't forget to share this video with them too. I'm also really curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. Have you seen this protection scheme applied in real-world installations or face challenges with fault detection in alternators? Share your technical experiences and questions down below. I'd love to start a deeper discussion with all of you. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more detailed videos like this one. If you're finding value in these lessons and want to support the effort, you can click the thanks button below the video, or even hit the join button to become a channel member and help me keep bringing you this kind of content.
Thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned, keep exploring, and I'll see you in the next video.